G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza and today's artist interview is with a very talented artist animator who is a jack of all trades, he's an incredible voice actor, animator and designer, winner of the Newgrounds 2011 User of the Year Award and an educator. He has contributed to hundreds of animations and games on the internet uh, and his animated work alone is reached by millions of people around the world, he is the creative connoisseur Rice Pirate aka Mick Blower. How are you today? I am very awesome. Very happy to be talking to you. So, yes. Mick, where are you from? Um, I was uh, born in Seattle, Washington, and then I was raised in Asia. Uh, Asia being Taiwan, uh, Malaysia, and Japan for about 10 years. So, you, you speak then... fluently in those languages, I would imagine? No, no, no. I, You would imagine. I would imagine. You. Yeah, just because I live. That's in what a country, reasonable I person would at least do if like. they lived there. But it's okay. You don't. You don't have to be a reasonable person. Um, no, I, I speak Chinese because I'm half Chinese, and then mm. uh, uh, Malaysia was a third Chinese, so I didn't have to. And then Japan, they they don't like English people, um, English speaking American people, or. Chinese people for that matter not to be racist that's a fact they don't and um, so but they do use kanji which is the the Chinese alphabet so I was able to get around but no speaking I I learned very little Japanese I wish I learned more I really do because I love Japan um, but no just Chinese and English how old are you Mick fuck you is that one of the questions <laughs> it is it's, uh, it's on this question sheet that I've prepared well, yeah. Well, uh, you, um, I'm, I'm 32. God. No, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah, I'm sorry, thanks. I'm sorry. I'm I just sticking around. That. I can cut this if you want. No, you can, you can keep that part. I, I don't mind being an older guy in this whole thing because I think mm. it's kind of important in that, um, you know, I went to school for acting and I, I think that while I still kind of do, do a lot of that and I, and I certainly don't regret studying that um, my passion was always animation mm -hmm. and um, this community and I did get into it late but I do feel like um, I hit it pretty hard when I was ready to well let's, I, let's talk about that then let's talk about yeah. your uh, your introduction into this whole world of animation and games and all this stuff that you you do quite a lot of and I no, saw yeah. when you kind of emerged uh, and became popular uh, and it was wasn't that long after you actually got started, like you said. So let's talk yeah. about that. How did how did that get started? I mean, it's all new grounds. Uh, I mean, you know, I I had um, after I graduated, I I done a, num a number of jobs, and uh, I ended up getting into voice acting. But none of it was the kind that I really wanted to do. I really wanted to get into like character voice acting uh, a lot like Larry kind of you know just the cartoons that we would see the ones that you did and all of our friends and colleagues do mm -hmm. and um, I felt like there was no reason why I shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff and I ended up stumbling upon it over YouTube through seeing a lot of uh, Eager Raptors stuff and I know that he didn't start on YouTube he started on Newgrounds and that's actually how I found Newgrounds was from viewing Eager Raptors stuff Mm -hmm. And then once I was there, it was like pff, the Pandora's box, the holy grail of kind of all of the internet cartoon stuff that really inspired me uh, mm -hmm. that I found right there. That's where it all started. So um, that's that's where I started. I submitted my first cartoon there. Um, it actually got blamed, so nobody saw it. <laughs> uh, and then I submitted a second one, which actually Tom was kind enough to front page and that was extremely inspiring and from there um i kind of just you know between my life and job and professional voice acting where i could lend my voice to the more animated stuff even if it was on you know flash cartoons on newgrounds that's where i got involved on in forums and stuff like that and um, that was that very cool. You are. You have a very respectable attitude towards this whole uh, 
artistic sphere of people that I know. And when I met you, you have that attitude in person as well, which is let's all work together. Let's, you know, it's very encouraging of collaboration. You work with others freely. So um, what kind of motivates you to to contribute to other people's work and uh, and gives you that feeling? Well, you know, um, I... When it comes to my design work, which I do professionally, I'm very much an island. Like I, I do it all myself, and I have a hard time letting other people do it. When it comes to other people's projects, um, there's just a collaborative spirit that I love. And it, and it, you know, I went to NYU for theater, so it was always about collaboration. And um, what I love more than anything is the idea that someone has an idea, and then they ask people to trust in that idea and to come on board and, and contribute to that idea and then they can bring their own you know spirit or their own two cents to that and, and take it to another level and so there are often artists who have a style that is very recognizable and specific uh and they don't venture out from that very much and i can for example from you grounds uh hans uh has a fantastic sort of blocky style which is really identifiable uh even ego raptor like you mentioned uh yep chris oni these people have very recognizable sort of art styles you however are a bit of an enigma you kind of you move around and I'm not, this isn't a, a, an insult this is a compliment just yeah. guised as a big no 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 insult. i understand what no. you're saying yeah, yeah you you uh um, <laughs> guys no no I know yeah you, you work around other people's style as well as adding your own flair to it so that's that's kind of an interesting sort of thing do you want to comment a bit on that as to uh yeah i mean it's approach? really simple i i i that's actually something that i've wanted to um kind of crystallize for a very long time and i i think what it boils down to is I am new to all of this, you know, you and Chris and Aaron and, you know, all these guys, Zach and everybody, you, you guys have been around a lot longer than I have. You guys have been creating content longer than I have. And I think, um, I think for me, what it is, is that I'm inspired by all of you guys and I am inspired to create. At the same time, I don't know exactly how I want to express myself, and so I kind of just explore a whole, a whole lot of uh, different styles. I, I find a style, and I sometimes try my best to replicate it, and other times I'm just, you know, mildly inspired by it. No matter what we do, if you do anything kind of cartoony and wild and crazy, someone's going to say you you, you were copying Ego Raptor, but that's just because, you know, he is, he kind of created a, his whole genre mm. of, you know, this manic um, video game inspired yelling craziness, you know, humor yeah. that I think a lot of us love mm. and that a lot of us, you know, enjoy doing. So we then, you know, we, we do kind of gravitate towards. But I would Mimic say that is in one term of the most flattering forms of compliments. Well, yeah, right. And, and I think, you know, when you go to art school, uh, which I never went to, I went to acting school, but I think art school, uh, I do know for a fact that you do study other artists in order to kind of find your own style. And I think that's just me right now. I mean, I've only been doing this stuff since I think 2010, maybe, mm. maybe. Um, I feel like I've been around a lot longer, but I haven't really been around very long. Um, so a lot of my time has been spent studying all of you guys you know i i take all of your videos and i do view them frame by frame literally frame by frame and i mm. and i do try to break down just understanding a animation b storytelling and then c just kind of the magic that happens beyond just animation and storytelling the uh editing and the writing and the you know what i mean like there's something beyond just the fundamentals of animating and storytelling mm -hmm. especially for the um internet audience there's there's a different kind of speed there's a different um there's, there's just a different energy that you need to be able to you know give immediately and that's something that i'm still learning now so that is why everything i create kind of seems like a hodgepodge of <laughs> everything um it's just me figuring out what the hell i'm doing so I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and I want you okay. to answer them in about a sentence or two, just as Got condensed it. as you can. So we can get a real quick understanding as to 
you, the artist, all right? So tell us all, what has been your most successful work? Dot, dot, dot is my most successful work. It is also my the largest shadow that has been cast upon everything that I've created, but it is my most successful work. What work are you most proud of to this day? Probably uh, Don't Touch Pac-Man. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell us why? Um, it was, it started off um, actually as part of my Egoraptor tribute. I had an awesome series tribute mm -hmm. series that I did yep. uh, for Pico Day. Um, and uh, that included uh, a Street Fighter thing and, uh, and a Kid Icarus thing and a bunch of other stuff. But a couple of scenes that never showed up were um, Galaga and Pac-Man. And so later on after probably about a year after Pico Day, I, I wanted to finish that Pac-Man scene. There was a little bit of drama just because Speedo Sausage had his own pretty much right around the time that I wanted to publish mine. Um, mm -hmm. But it ended up, long story short, it ended up being me just wanting to really get uh, frame by frame. It was really just an exercise in animation for me at that point. Like It went from I had a quick joke to tell to... I want to really explore frame by frame animation and get some good reactions and get some good blah 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 so like every frame for me was very much about you know being an animator rather than just a joke teller who does some animation mm -hmm. um, and it got you know it did get a lot of views which was nice but more importantly, it got a lot of credit from my colleagues and peers who I respect so much and, and are really the greatest force for my inspiration. Uh, Harry was really impressed and a lot of other people are impressed. And that, honestly, I mean, and you know this as a creator mm. too, you know, having your audience appreciated it is always great. But having your colleagues who you are inspired by, when they comment on it, all of a sudden it just... It makes the work, you know what I mean? It, it goes from being like, oh, I'm glad everyone liked it to, mm. wow, I'm I'm so happy I made that to, yeah. you know what I mean? There's to a, a degree. There's an interesting uh, feeling that must come with that, that you must have felt quite strongly when you visited the Newgrounds headquarters. Yeah, that there's that feeling of being surrounded by these people that you, you admire their work like Harry and yes. like Ego Raptor and all yes. this stuff. And it must have been interesting for you to meet, for instance, Ego Raptor, who was the driving force for you to get into this animation and join Newgrounds. And all of a sudden you're yeah. just kind of sitting around drinking a beer with him and having a chat, you know? So do you want to talk about how that sort of influenced you and made you feel? Yeah, I mean, those guys, I mean, that's why I loved Pico Day. Um, the very first one I went to, um, you know, meeting you and, and all those guys, it was, it's so hard with the internet. You you always have this assumption that people are bigger than life, you know, and, and to a degree, the talent that everyone possesses is bigger than life. But when you actually meet these people, the humbleness and the kindness and just the fun that you can have with these people is so great. Mm -hmm. And I remember that from the very first Pico Day, absolutely. And all the other ones after that, and even MAGFest after mm -hmm. that, um, just meeting these people that were my inspirations and how all of these people are so humble and, and very, very awesome. As far as how it inspired me, um, you know, I would say after those events, um, it went from, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm hanging out with these people to, you know what, not only have I hung out with these people, but now I'm working on projects that these people are working on. Mm -hmm. And it didn't, it didn't lessen the, uh, kind of urgency or the amount of, um, <laughs> investment that you want to make in it, obviously, um, but I do think that it put it in a very real context that these aren't just these icons. These are these are people that are not only icons and not only inspirations, you know, Harry and, and whatnot. But these are people that you can meet. And these are people that can give you very real world advice and they can also be very goofy and drunk or it's, weird it's or whatever. A, yeah, it's <laughs> such know, a like, weird barrier. Hey, like... um. 
it's 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 like you have these two pulling entities within yourself one of them sure. is i love this person i respect their work oh my god i'm meeting them what an amazing experience and then on the other side of things all you're thinking is just be normal right because right, right, right. like you don't yeah. want to just be like just like looking at them like yeah. this is, and just like you know but it's hard you know it's hard to well, to be just harder. cool about it but to also absolutely. love it absolutely yeah. and not only that not only that but like uh Aaron doesn't drink very much at all uh Harry God, doesn't I drink couldn't very imagine much if at he all did. that'd be scary but i'm just saying that like a lot of these guys and even and even Chris doesn't drink that much at all uh, you know Zach does a little bit like if you can pressure him into it if you can pressure him into it but otherwise, they're all very responsible people, and they're all like, and it makes so much sense, you know. Like me, Stamper. There, there's a lot of guys who like we're creative, but we also like to get nasty, mm -hmm. you know. And then there's these guys who I I also look up to, who I do, I, you know. Of course, I look up to Stamper and and love him very much. But you know, there's a lot of these guys that like, you know, when we were hanging out at. Magfest or Pico Day, mm -hmm. they weren't drinking that much, mm -hmm. and I'm older than all of them, and I'm drinking a lot more than them, and I'm getting a lot more trash than all of them. I'm getting more stupid than all of them, and and when I walk away from that, you know, part of me thinks, well, if I want to be as productive and successful as these guys, mm. maybe I need to tone it down a notch, you know? And oh, come on, not even. But I, I don't want to think that, but I do think that. Yeah, and I, I only think it because, yeah. because it, it, and listen, I am a very productive person. I mean, if you know my schedule, yeah, yeah. which I think you have a glimpse of, yes, mm. I do a lot of stuff, but I could do even more. And the fact that these guys, you know, and, and they do their thing and they somehow find a way not to, you know, I generally get as trash as I do to try to mitigate the damage that I do during the day, you know, in front of my work. Like, that's how I go yeah. to bed. But they've somehow found a way to, to dance the line both ways without going the crazy route of, like, trying to knock yourself out. So good for them. But I will say that, you know, meeting them and hanging out with them, not only was it a good time, but it also reminded me that, you know, a lot of artists, and I don't know if I got this from acting school, but I think a lot of artists get this notion where you have to be, like, messed up in order to, like, and when I say messed up, I don't mean mentally messed up, like, my father raped me. I mean, like, messed up, like, I need to get trashed kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that they get this artist kind of notion of, I need to get into this phase in order to, I don't know, be an artist or do these mm. things or be creative or whatever the case is, you know, rock star mentality. And and the truth is, these guys aren't they they aren't rock stars. I don't think you could like, trash a hotel room and get away with it by being an animator. I I do think that there is the idea of um you know the the artist mentality of being an artist this bohemian ideal of being an artist versus the the business side of it which mm -hmm. is i was an artist and it happened i was creative and now this is my living and this is what i do and mm -hmm. you know this is you know and, and i think those guys i think aaron and and chris especially guys who got into it very young guys who got into it at the beginning you know who started the whole youtube animation phase mm -hmm. and these guys did start that i mean there was a lot of stuff in youtube before them but they really did kind it's of crazy create to the think genre about, huh? over time because of how other venues were monetizing youtube specifically um there was a soft exodus um a very polite exodus towards youtube mm -hmm just because it was more financially viable. But, you know, Tom always had his Pico days and, and stuff like that, and no one ever didn't want to come. And I think it's because people love and respect Newgrounds so much. And it's the reason why, you know, someone like Oni, right? Mm -hmm. Oni's YouTube channel yep. is Oni NG. Even yours, we Bryce Pratt Newgrounds, yeah. Well, yeah, the whole thing spelled out. Yeah. 
you know, it's not a mystery why NG or Newgrounds is a part of our names. You know, when Oni created his channel, he had every opportunity to make other versions of that, but he chose NG. And I chose Newgrounds, and there's a lot of people who did, and I think it's because we love and respect the roots from which we came from. And when I say we, mm. I mean, who the hell am I? I mean, I, I came way after the, the golden age. I mean, Yeah, but you do, you and this, about- this is a personality feature I've observed in you, if I can be so bold as to start talking about you. Um, Fuck you! That, uh... <laughs> Don't get it, please. You, you're, you're humble in the way you talk to the to a point of a fault, you actually kind of don't give yourself credit where it's due. So I will do that for you. Uh, that I, I, I would consider you on par with these people who who bring a lot of attention to new grounds through these other mediums, and that's why we're talking to you today because you're a very respectable and talented artist. I got lucky, and I got some good friends. That's what I'm gonna say. And you're one of those good friends, and I got lucky with some of the things I made. Look, the truth is, the talent level that you and Chris and Aaron and all these guys who started out with Newgrounds is so far beyond what I could comprehend now. I, it is certainly something I aspire to. I'm not going to say you're, you're three laps ahead of me, but I will say that it is something that I am aspiring to. But you guys, in terms of actual art and animation, are so far ahead um, that I will always be inspired and I always consider myself you know a sophomore to the varsity or whatever the phrase is but um you know in in, in terms of um you know Tom which we, we were talking about and Newgrounds I do think that all of you guys did come from there and um maybe that's not where all of your success came from but it certainly was a spawning point and it was where I was inspired. Oh, sorry. You had something to say. About oh, no, that. I was just going to say that um, I'm sure you can relate in the sense that wherever I end up, I will always attribute my creative beginning career wise to Newgrounds. And I think that's something we all have in common. Well, you are you are one of the few creators that are as loyal, I think. I think a lot of the other guys. Um, as loyal as they are, they are they are very loyal. I think if you ask Aaron or Chris or any of those guys, like they love Tom and they love Newgrounds, but you're one of the few people that consistently references Newgrounds and consistently links back to Newgrounds. And I don't think your efforts are for naught. I, well, I you know, it's not, not a specific um, effort. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I don't think it is. In fact, I think in the near future, and I can't give too much away, but I do think Newgrounds has come back with a vengeance. Yeah, and that's what in I'm hoping that, too, you know. It's interesting because when you were talking about this soft exodus away from Newgrounds, uh, we're, we're more talking about content viewing. The soft, the soft yeah. exodus is content viewing and creators will often go where that viewing is happening, which happens to be in YouTube and it happens to be in DeviantArt for art and it happens to perhaps be other gaming websites like Armor Games uh, for games. So Newgrounds, yeah. which is a bit of a... Uh, and congregate yeah, as well. well. And congregate, exactly, yeah. So, uh, we, and they're all kind of very ba- backed by larger corporations. They're not as, as private anymore, some of them and things like that. You know, whereas Newgrounds is a bit of a jack of all trades, master of none. But the thing that is, it is the master of, in my opinion, it's the creative collaboration. Collaboration, atmosphere. absolutely. Yeah. We just said, I don't know yeah. if you can sync that in your video, but we just said collaboration at the same time, and that is exactly what Newgrounds has always been, which is this huge, um, uh, just a pool of talent that you cannot. I mean, if you look at, you know, a lot of the games are coming out on the Xbox Arcade. If you're looking at the people who are dominating the YouTube animation, you know, portion. Mm -hmm. uh, If you were to look at all of those things, Newgrounds is a part of all of that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's indeniably a part of all of that. Um, And I said indeniably. I don't know if it's undeniably. It's undeniably, but just slightly drunk, so it's okay. But yeah, that's fine. But I will say that we are a part of this community, and the the idea that Newgrounds has a chance, 
And again, I'm not going to say too much about it. I I will just we're say we're getting cryptic undertones from yep, Ross Part here. That's right. That's right. The you, looming This is the future. second. This is V two of this interview, and because this of this, is you're we did this interview before, right? ladies and gentlemen, and I'm doing that's it again right. because I screwed up. I apologize. No, Nick. you. Thank didn't you for screw being up. so gracious as to join me again. As to point that out, no. Um, but not only that, but I wasn't drunk the last time, and I didn't know what I know this time, which is why uh, oh, really? okay. yeah, yeah. half secrets this time. Okay, I'm I am enjoying this one quite a bit, which is good. Uh, let's good. let's bring it to a wrap up because we've been going for about half Got an it. hour now. So we'll just Got do it. a few few little things just to talk about you and the little finer points of yourself. What is your favorite color, Mick? Um. It's often black, but if it's not black, it's like purple, mm -hmm. like a like a like a soft reddish purple. Cool. What is your favorite food? Um, what did I say last time? Um, I would say it's either sushi or pho. Uh huh. Um, pho I think you said pho. Food. I remember pho. Did I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So sushi or pho, um, if I had to live on an island with nothing but, I'd probably say pho because it's comfort food. What is your favorite smell? That's always, that, now, I always feel a little dirty asking that question for some reason. Like it just seems a weird You know, it's so ask. weird. I never had an answer to that. It was always kind of like a make up an answer to that. Mm -hmm. But I have one now. Yeah, go on. And it's, uh, it's the smell of my dog. And uh, mm -hmm. he's dead now. But I I smell them all over our house and mm. it uh that triggers the memory and yeah, I understand that. Yeah. What's your favorite sound? My favorite sound? Does that include music? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Just give us your okay. favorite musician if you want. I don't you know, I don't have a favorite musician. I love all sorts of music, Genre. everything. Genre is cool. My favorite newest genre, which is not the answer you're looking for, is French glitch funk. All right, cool. The end. <laughs> Lovely. Well, let's just Sorry. wrap up on um, if you were unable to be the artist you are and do the things artistically that you do, what would you be doing instead? Um, could I voice act? That's artistic, and we're going to exclude that because you do that. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I would go to China, and I would try to build houses for people. Mm -hmm. But I always thought that while I was doing that, I would still have the option to do these other things. So, for the well, I guess for the purpose of the answer, yeah, I would go to China and build houses for people. Cool. No, that's cool, man. All right, so finally, Mick, what can we look forward to seeing from you in the future? Um, well, voice acting, I started voice acting for Lore, which is cool, um, which is a great series. If you haven't seen it, Lore is like a bunch of video game information within a minute. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I also voiced for a couple of games. One is Cry More, which was funded over Kickstarter, mm -hmm. which is a really cool experience. Um, there's an Attack on Titan thing that I can't really talk too much about. So there's that. And then there's uh, a bunch of animation stuff that I have in the works. There is a music video that I plan to finish today, which didn't happen for the Weeble. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I have a bunch of, um, my own personal animation things. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the video interview with Rice Pirate. Unfortunately, the video was cut short, but it was cut short right at the very end when I was about to say goodbye anyway, so it's all good. Uh, make sure to check out Rice Pirate's artwork and animations by following the links in the description. Thank you for joining and until next time, I'll see you later.